On the surface, this is not a camera that makes any sense. It takes the hybrid approach in the opposite direction of most mirrorless cameras, putting more emphasis on video rather than still photography. It's an approach that will make it appeal to fewer people, and yet that's also what makes it so good. It is uniquely Panasonic, a result of years of refinement made to the video modes of its cameras ever since 2010's GH2 became a surprise hit with videographers. So the GH2 was kind of this secret legend among filmmaking circles. People were hacking the firmware to get higher bit rates out of it, and of course adapting all kinds of lenses onto it, thanks to the versatility of the Micro Four Thirds mount. And really the kind of cool thing about this is that Panasonic looked at what was happening and said, hey, why don't we just build the camera that all these people are trying to turn our camera into? And so each successive generation of the GH camera grew increasingly video-centric, bringing in high-end features by default. And last year's GH5 seemed like the culmination of that evolution. But it turns out Panasonic had one more card up its sleeve. That card is the GH5S, the first Lumix camera to make video the priority. It can still shoot photos, but its 10 megapixel sensor lacks the resolution of Panasonic's other mirrorless cameras. And it also lacks the sensor shift stabilization found on the GH5. However, with fewer of them, each individual pixel is larger, collecting more light and helping the GH5S shoot at higher ISOs with less noise. As for nixing the stabilization, apparently that also helps reduce noise by ensuring the camera runs cooler. That sensor also has the exact number of pixels it needs for recording cinema 4K resolution without pixel binning or line skipping. And the results, quite frankly, are stunning. The GH5S has the same file type and bitrate options as the GH5, so up to 400 megabits per second with 10-bit 422 color. But it can now shoot cinema 4K in addition to the standard Ultra HD 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p can be shot as high as 240 frames per second, but it does crop the footage slightly in this mode. You also don't have access to the highest bit rates and bit depth at those high frame rates. The Vlog L profile is now built in rather than being a separate purchase as it is on the GH5. This provides a really nice starting point for color grading and helps get the most dynamic range out of the sensor without resorting to raw video, which of course would take up much more space. Thanks to the high bitrate, you can pull a lot of color and detail out of the files, and it's really quite impressive watching the transformation from the flat to graded footage. Video is also very crisp, and noise levels are well controlled up to ISO 6400 or so. Even pushing up to 25,600 can still yield usable results, but here you will definitely run into quite a bit of noise. To work in the highest quality setting, you'll need very fast memory cards. Panasonic recommends at least a V60 rated SDXC card. You'll also want high capacity cards as 10 minutes of video at 400 megabits per second will take up about 32 gigabytes. Of course, if you'd rather, you can still record externally thanks to a clean HDMI output, but we definitely like the convenience of being able to record such a high quality file straight to SD card. Beyond the improved video quality, the GH5S also adds several tools for video shooters. A waveform monitor and vector scope have both found their way into the settings, helping you judge exposure and color, respectively. You can now also sync time code to another compatible camera, which is very useful for multi-camera productions. Working without the benefits of a multi-person crew, we also really appreciate all of the different autofocus modes that the GH5S has to offer, especially face and eye tracking, which we're using to shoot this shot right now. Now, we know that some people had had trouble with this mode on the GH5, and we can't definitively say if the GH5S is any better, as we haven't been able to compare the two cameras side by side. But face tracking did work reliably in our tests, although it may have been a little bit slower than some of the other modes. At $2,500, the GH5S is more expensive than the GH5, 
but it offers cinematic video quality that can't really be matched by any other hybrid mirrorless camera. It's a shining example of not just how far video technology has come, but also how approachable it is today. For all the other one-person crews out there, the GH5S enables you to be more effective in more situations than you ever could be before, and that's the real value of a camera like this. It lets you do more in less time on a lower budget, all while still delivering higher quality results. But the GH5S is also a much more niche product than what has come before it. Frankly, we're a bit shocked that Panasonic even made it. This is the type of camera that no other company has attempted, but we're certainly glad that the decision was made. But as much as we like this camera, and we really do, being in the business of covering consumer technology, we have to acknowledge the fact that the GH5S does not bring as much value to as many people as the standard GH5. For everyone from wedding and event videographers to travel vloggers to, well, most walks of YouTubers, the GH5 is simply going to be the better choice. It's less expensive, it has great stabilization, it takes higher resolution still photos, and the things that it lacks in comparison to the S model, like time code sync, just aren't things that are going to matter to the majority of users. However, if you are among the few who have been hoping for a hyper-focused mirrorless camera for shooting video, if you're simply looking for another confirmation that the GH5S is as good as everyone says it is, well, you're in luck. Because yeah, it's absolutely that good. For more on the GH5S, make sure you head to digitaltrends.com for our full review.